The only thing the American people lack is a leader. The only thing they lack is our party having the same gumption and backbone that this woman has. Folks, we've been good at pointing out how bad Bush is, but I don't want to hear any more of it. Everybody knows it. <laughs> no, really. Think about it. Not a joke. Not a joke. Go up to your strongest Republican friend. Ask the following question. I'll make you bet. I realize the press is here. I get in trouble, but I want you to watch this. Walk up to your any Repo staunch Republican you know. Look them in the eye and ask the following question. Do you think the administration is competent? And I'll bet you lunch at Quince restaurant. Here's what you'll see. The first thing you'll see. Try it. You're going to think I'm kidding, but try it. You'll see the watch my eyes. Do you think the do you think this administration is competent? You'll see them go. Now just look down. Now just look down. Think about it. Try it. It's a little bit like bringing up some bad memories. When they'd walk up to us and say, what about Monica? What did we do? No, I'm not joking. We put our eyes down because we couldn't defend that, but we say, but, and he was, we have a great president, but the economy is good, but we're not at war, but incomes are growing. Yes. Yeah. They put their eyes down and they can't say anything. So folks, let's get off the kick of making ourselves feel good with the, with the lines, the lines that talk about, the, the applause lines about how bad Bush is. Average Democrats want to know one thing. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And I'll conclude, we got to do three things. we got to pass nationally the security and faith test. Hear me? Faith. I don't mean you have to be born again. I don't mean you have to pretend you are what you're not. But we have to once again do what Bill Clinton did and we somehow didn't do the last two times. How do we get to be retain the party of the elite? Think about it. Look at the poll. People think we're elite. Why? The reason they do is we haven't demonstrated through our body language that we, we, we respect people of faith. They don't want us to be like them. They just want us to respect them. Unless you think I'm exaggerating, go to some of our elite friends, liberal and conservative Democrats, the ones who are very, very smart. And ask them the question and watch their eyes. Do you think someone can go to an altar call in the Baptist church in southern Delaware and pledge allegiance to God and be smart at the same time? Our mom is a very smart woman. Her name is Catherine Eugenia Finnegan Bite. She's 89 years old. She lives with me. She's extremely well read. My mother says a rosary every single Sunday when she goes to Mass with Valerie or me or my son Bo. And she says it and offers it up for her deceased brother Ambrose Finnegan who was shot down in New Guinea and his body was never recovered. My mother is not a stupid woman. My mother thinks that brings him back. My mother doesn't think there's any miracle that comes from that. But my mother thinks it's important. I asked one of my very sophisticated colleagues in the Senate, Democrat, Six years ago about that, we had an argument. I said, well, okay, Charlie, you say we're the same, but let me, and I gave that example. I said, what do you think of that? And this good guy, friend of mine, looked at me and said, I think that's quaint. <laughs> Folks, too many to meet in our party think people of faith are quaint. Why are middle class people voting against us? They're voting against us because they don't really think I think we respect them. Why did Clinton, why did Clinton win in spite of the fact they had no illusions about him being a saint? Why? Because they knew he respected them. So the two things you got to ante up are security and faith. And then the four things you got to deal with. You got to deal with energy. You got to deal with health care. You got to deal with education, and you got to deal with an aspect of safety, public safety. If we do that, folks, I promise you, I promise you, we'll be part of the realignment, the realignment of the political parties in this country. Ultimately, Americans are practical, they're generous, and they are tough.
This was Senator Biden's third trip to New Hampshire.